all right so just to show you my solar system set up inside my shed now a lot has changed since my last uh, video showing you guys this to the left over here I just have a temperature device just showing me the temp inside the shed just found that to be useful and here to the right is my new charge controller and I did an unboxing of this charge controller but here as you can see it's looping through different settings different settings that it's monitoring uh, it monitors the battery volts as well as how many solar amps are being used for my solar panels as I stated in my previous video my solar array or my solar panels produce 9.3 amps but if the battery doesn't need that the type of battery that I'm using doesn't need to be charged that quickly it's just gonna pull in exactly what it needs so to the right of that I have a push button and this allows me to turn the load off the solar off it allows me to test my system and allows me to restart the charge controller if I need to below that as you can see I have the battery status It's blinking right now but it's fairly full but it's charging it as well and to the left of that is a temp sensor this sensor is for the battery it, it, it monitors the temperature of the battery if the battery is too hot it'll just basically disconnect the load and it'll disconnect the solar panel connection as well but I don't have that installed yet but I can later on it's what it was optional and to the left of that is my solar charging light it just is basically telling me if I'm getting energy from my solar panels and also you can see the battery types I can select if my battery bank is a gel batteries or is it sealed or is it flooded and below that is the terminals for the solar connection as well as for the battery and the load but again as I stated in my previous video this charge controller has so many features to it I really don't have to worry about anything going wrong in my solar system this charge controller is really just protecting just about everything especially for my batteries but anyway to just move down here a little bit as you can see I'm still using my old charge controller and like I stated in my previous video this charge controller can only handle 10 amps but that was fairly close to how many amps I'm producing now which is 9.3 and sometimes you produce a little bit more than what you're supposed to be producing so what I'm probably going to use this for I'm not really sure yet I may hook up a fan to this and buy another inverter as well but I do have this hooked up to a, a smaller battery and it's being powered by the 5 watt solar panel so it's not charging that battery as quickly but didn't want to just throw it out and not use it for anything and here you can see I have my 400 watt inverter uh, again this was enough for what I needed to use uh, use it for which is to power my netbook so I'm not really even using half of what uh, this inverter it, it can produce I'm just using about 11 to maybe 15 watts with my netbook hooked up to it so yeah, uh, I did find a use for that little caution sign. I felt this would be useful if anybody else came in here and was wondering what exactly is all these connections for. So I don't know. It's up to you. You may want to throw it in the trash <laughs> if you don't need it. And on the floor here, I still got a little work to do. Um, have a little. I have one battery. The uh, I think it's a uh, 115 amp years. This is the battery I used in my first solar panel project. It isn't a full deep cycle battery. It's like half starter and half deep cycle. But uh, I didn't want to just throw it out and not use it at all. So I'm just going to use it until it goes dead. But I do need to buy at least another one. So my battery uh, charge doesn't get below 80%. But for now it would be okay. And here I have a smaller battery which is plugged into the older charge controller which I just showed you. And again, I might use this to power a little fan that vents out this shed a little bit, just keep it a little, keep it cooler. But again, this part isn't really even done yet. I definitely want to fix these connections and get some um, larger wires as well, some thicker wires, I should say. And I have a fuse, a 50 amp fuse coming in the mail as well. I have two of those coming in the mail. I want to hook those up as well too. So yeah, just want to give you a little an idea how my setup is coming along here. For the most part everything is how I want it but I just have a couple little more minor things I need to fix up for the batteries but yeah let's just go inside and let me show you how that's hooked up with my uh, netbook. Alright so here's just my basic setup here I have my cord from my inverter coming up under the floor into this outlet that I just installed 
and it's not an outlet that's plugged into the wall or that's inside the wall it's just an outlet just hanging out which is fine again I don't want to do anything that's permanent and I just have my kilowatt meter plugged directly into it so I can keep an eye on how many watts different devices are consuming and over here to the right I have my netbook that's going to stay on 24 7 and I have another power outlet just to make it easier to plug multiple devices in at the same time so with this system it's great for if the power goes out you need to plug in a TV I can plug in just about any TV in this house into it but it's I can't run those devices 24 7 but the netbook I can and it'll be staying on 24 7 and I can control this remotely the lid on this netbook as I stated in my last video uh, it will stay closed I just control it remotely and I'll be using this system to mostly just back up my website and any other uh, functions or needs I may have in the future for it so this was my little small project that I figured I would take up it cost quite a bit trying to make it uh, power it for 24 7 but it can come in handy like I said definitely during times when you your house doesn't have any power but in a way uh, I will show you here in a second uh, how I will be controlling this remotely and how it can be very useful if you are a website owner Alright, so for some of you all who are still new to the concept of controlling your computer remotely, I just wanted to do a quick demonstration here about how I plan to go about doing that myself. And there are a lot of free applications out there. You just really need to find the one that meets your needs. But I've been using TeamViewer for some time now, and I like the fact that I can use it with both Windows operating system and Apple operating system. And right now, I'm I'm logged into TeamViewer on my iMac, which is an Apple operating system, and I'm logged into my netbook, which is a Windows operating system. So it's really great that it is compatible with both operating systems, but usually what I do before I start even messing around in my netbook, I, I remove the wallpaper because I want to optimize the speed and I change the quality to optimize speed as well. So I'm not trying to log in to view pictures or to watch videos or anything like that for my specific needs for this netbook I just need to log in and check on my backups for my website make sure it's backing up the way it needs to be or maybe I need to grab a local file from my computer at home I don't know it, the list is endless about what you can possibly need a computer on for 24 7 that you can access anywhere around the world so having this little visual of of what's taking place in my netbook is really helpful so again here I can control it just as if I was sitting right in front of my netbook and I could do this anywhere around the world so it's a really useful piece of software and another application that I enjoy using is the log me in it's a web application not something you well you do have to download one software onto your netbook to use it but other than that it's a really simple application or web app to use for your computer I can log in and control my computer the same way the team viewer allows me to control it so let me just log in right fast here and here with what I like about log me in is it gives me of course this ability to control my netbook or check different files or anything like that but it also gives me a lot of useful information about what's going on with my netbook so here I can see the system information events, the processes, network, traffic, disk drives, the space, and it just it shows a lot of inform useful information that you may want to know uh, what's taking place on your netbook. And it should probably tell you the temperature as well, which would be great. So having these two applications installed, I really have everything I need to, to have to really monitor my netbook and to, again, to make sure my, my websites are, are being backed up the the way they should be been backed up so it's a very important definitely if you do care about your websites you should be taking your own personal backs up backups and it's really great that this netbook is being powered only by solar energy and it's on 24 7 so this was my little small project for the summer so again if you have any questions about anything uh feel free to leave me a comment send me a message and thank you for viewing and i'll see you next time